so I'm talking about social enterprise and institutional interventions in sustainability. And I've been really genuinely excited about coming to talk about this. Uh, Annalisa um, emailed me about it, and then we happened, to, we, and we hadn't met, we happened to meet at Harvard uh, about a month and a half ago. And I was there on an executive education program for a couple of weeks. And it was absolutely wonderful, some really, really great lecturers. And they did teach me something which I'm going to use now, which is building on that. So building on Jem's point, um, I'm going to talk about uh, a lecture that really uh, kind of grated with me. And so I, uh, so much so that I wanted to rip the microphone off the woman's lapel and stand up and give the alternative view. So I'm afraid that's what you're going to have to suffer today, because at the time I didn't have the platform. Um, so the lecturer was from the business school, and she was teaching us about business with purpose. Uh, she was saying, in an era of big banks failing and causing, uh, to a large degree, economic crises around the world, um, businesses with social or environmental purpose do better. Nothing wrong so far. Uh, where I took exception was that she, she took the, the next part of the argument uh, much too far down the Friedman line for, uh, for me. She said, the ultimate purpose of a business is to make money. So you can make more money if you get yourself a purpose. And that was, that's what she was there to teach us. And actually, whilst I was, uh, when I managed to stop this image of myself grabbing the microphone away from her, I had a different image in my head. And it was of all of the Harvard Business School lecturers sitting around in their common room thinking, oh, I wonder what sustainability is about. And one of them has a light bulb moment and said, oh, I know what sustainability is about. It's about making more money. We can definitely teach that. Um, and I, I, I imagine that that's something like that happened. So um, what she was teaching us was she asked us to read a case study about a large stationery company in the US. Um, and we were supposed to be learning from the directors of this company. They'd set up a foundation uh, because they'd been getting a really bad reputation for getting all of the small companies that did distribution uh, out of business because they were taking over so many companies. So to mitigate that, they set up a foundation basically giving pens and pencils and little backpacks to primary school kids. And uh, what we were supposed to think was brilliant was the fact that this company allowed employees to work on the foundation without ever tracking their time. And there was a beautiful quote, which I'm going to read to you, um, from one of their directors. I think it gives, this is working for the foundation, people a sense that this company cares about me, about my interests. It makes me want to work even harder. Yeah, I went off in the middle of the day to deliver backpacks to a school, but you can bet your bottom dollar I came back in and plugged in for twice as many hours that day. So while listening, so I, I fundamentally disagree that getting yourself a purpose in order to make more money is going to work. Uh, what I wanted to quickly do is say, I, I obviously don't think that, well, not obviously, but I don't think that making money is a bad thing. And in fact, it can be a very good thing if driven towards the right purpose. Where I depart from the perhaps common, perhaps Harvard Business School uh, view of the world is in thinking that if business also seeks to have social or environmental purpose, then it needs to explain that in terms of making money. Or uh, a phrase I like even less well than that, giving back. Um, I think that, that giving back is a really interesting phrase because it kind of inherently within it acknowledges that you have taken something, that somehow the original action has caused damage or harm or had some kind of detrimental effect. Um, the first time I ever came across the phrase, and, I, uh, the phrase, and um, actually since then I've found out it's the first time it's ever been written down, was uh, in the writings of Kant, a moral philosopher. And I came across it when I was studying uh, philosophy at university. Um, Kant was never one of my favourite philosophers. He was, he's one of those people who uh, wouldn't say in a few words what he could say in reams and reams. Uh, so I'm not going to give you a quote from him because they were just all so ridiculously long. Uh, I, could, I couldn't find one short enough. But he argued that although when people or businesses make large amounts of money, we're acting within our rights, at the same time we're creating injustice or inequality in society. So to mitigate for that, we genuinely have to give back. 
And it kind of makes me think, why do people do that? Why are these people on, on the tube thinking, you know, oh, I'm looking forward to giving my giving back part of the day, my mentoring part of the day, when actually the rest of their job is something that they feel they have to give back from? Why do people run businesses that they feel they need to give back from? I think at best, giving back is going to fool people for a short while, and at worst, it's going to sound inauthentic and ultimately undermine what you were trying to achieve in the first place. Um, Maud, when she introduced me, mentioned that for a while I ran, I set up and ran a social enterprise uh, called Carbon Retirement. Um, what the, the organisation was doing, and it was a company, was attempting to reform the carbon offset market, which probably many of you have heard stories about the, the offset market, probably 99% of them are bad, um, and that's kind of with good reason in the vast majority of cases. So uh, what we were trying to do was use emissions trading as a means of allowing people to offset in a way that uh, was genuinely robust and achievable. So we'd uh, facilitate purchases of credits from the emissions trading scheme, pollution allowances basically, take them out of the system on behalf of businesses who voluntarily wanted to offset or individuals and reduce the cap down in the emissions trading scheme so heavy industry couldn't pollute. And um, you might have gathered the point, the point of me doing this was never to try and make bucket loads of cash, not least because I didn't think that it would <laughs> make bucket loads of cash, but the point of me doing it was to genuinely try and tackle a problem that I'd seen not be fixed. I was fed up with NGOs complaining about the issue but not offering a viable alternative for, for the businesses that actually genuinely wanted to give their money to an environmental cause. Um, so I accidentally gave birth to a so social enterprise without really ever having heard of what social entrepreneurship was. Um, all I knew was that the point of the organisation that I'd set up was first and foremost uh, for environmental and social purposes. But that it also made money. And we were quite successful. Making more money enabled us to get more clients, which enabled us to have more impact. And not only more impact on the emissions trading scheme, but what we did was recycle the profits back into research, making the current bad practices in the market more transparent, and including in the market that we were uh, reliant on and involved in, more transparent, which in turn actually then helped the business because it, drive, it was driving more um, clients towards us. So carbon retirement is by no means unique, and the concept of social enterprise isn't new. Um, I like the fact that in the room we've probably got people from really large social enterprises and Mary Jo's one and a half people and a hundred volunteers. Uh, there's lots of businesses around that have a social or environmental impact and more being set up all of the time. Um, and I just wanted to leave you with an interesting fact that I found out recently. Does anybody know how many uh, standard businesses, how many more standard businesses are run by men than by women? What's the ratio? Does anybody have that stat? It's about twice as many. So about twice as many standard businesses will be set up by men than women. With social enterprises, it's completely equal. So I shall, I shall leave you with that thought. Thank you. Mm -hmm.